Kid, seriously. Welcome to the AAF Update. It's me, Amaya Madrid, giving you the scores and analysis from everyone's favorite startup football league. It's the Alliance of American Football. Big thank you here to my main man, Luke Neitzel, who's offered to edit this and ask some questions uh, from the peanut gallery. A big story heading into this week was whether or not the Alliance would be able to maintain the same steam it had in the first week. The opening salvo of the first two games last Saturday actually beat the Rockets versus Thunder game that the NBA had on at the same time. So this week, the games moved off of CBS and on to TNT and the NFL Network and CBS Sports Channel, which will undoubtedly have some effects on viewership. Attendance at the games, however, uh, look to be generally the same, with most of the lower bowls partially filled throughout the league, a pretty good sign, all things considered. The first game of the weekend took place in Birmingham between My Iron and the Salt Lake City Stallions, led by head coach Dennis Erickson. The Iron had taken it to Memphis in week one, and the Stallions were coming off of getting flat out wrecked by the Hot Shots. Despite starting off with a 9-0 lead, the Stallions often struggled in the second half. The tie turned on a muffed punt, by Salt Lake that was picked up by Shahid Salmon from uh, the Iron and taken back to the house. Though the play was reviewed and it was really, really close. It really couldn't tell um, if the player's knee was down or not. Instant replay, uh, like I said, was inconclusive and the touchdown stood. Late in the fourth quarter, former Alabama and Cleveland Brown and Indianapolis Colt running back Trent Richardson punched it in and Tim Lewis's Iron go 2-0 and while Salt Lake falls to 0-2. Game number two. On the NFL Network, featured Mike Singletary's Memphis Express at home versus the Arizona Hotshots, coached by former UCLA headman Rick Neuheisel. In a game that was somewhat familiar to the one earlier in the day, Memphis got out to a strong lead behind a pair of field goals, sandwiching a touchdown by former St. Louis Ram Zach Stacy. For a while, it looked even like uh, Christian Hackenberg had a future as a quarterback in this league, uh, but the Hotshots, who have looked, no pun intended, like the hottest team in the league, had threw three touchdowns and two, uh, two point conversion in the second half. Um, John Wolford, their quarterback, and a pair of explosive wide receivers in Rashad Ross and Josh Huff, as well as a running game by committee, puts Arizona up two to nothing. Uh, moving on to the third game, Sunday afternoon's game uh, brought us San Antonio in a matchup of two teams that won their first game. The Commanders, led by Mike Riley, were up against the old ball coach himself, Steve Spurrier, and the Apollos of Orlando, a team which I am 70% sure is in the league, specifically because Spurrier said he would coach them if there was an Orlando team. Stop me if you've heard this one. San Antonio gets off to a lead. They had two different leads, actually, of 10 points during the game, but Spurrier's aerial assault was ridiculous. Quarterback Garrett Gilbert, a Texas guy, caught fire and is arguably becoming the best quarterback in the league. He went 9 for 28 for 383 yards and two touchdowns, as well as a two-point conversion. Game was classic Spurrier, where his offense eventually just blew the doors off the competition. While San Antonio is a good team, uh, Orlando wins this one, which was the best game of the season so far. In the final game of the weekend, which was actually finishing up as we started recording our other show, there were two 0-1 teams that were colliding as Atlanta visited Mike Martz and the Funky Bunch of the San Diego Fleet. These two teams were pretty much train wrecks for different reasons, which I'll talk about when we get to our rankings. In the first quarter, Matt Sims, he's the son of Phil Sims, brother of Chris Sims, had the ledgers, legends rolling a little bit. Atlanta got a field goal, then a touchdown went up 9-0. In the second, however, the Fleet started uh, moving the ball a little bit behind former Gopher and Rutgers guy Philip Nelson. They notched two field goals, and at half it was 9-6. to six. And in the second half, Nelson and the fleet totally took over the game and pulled away at the end. So that's the recap, Luke, of your favorite uh, secondary football league. Before I get to the rankings, uh, what have you heard as just somebody who's not as interested in the league as I am? Uh, what have your impressions been just from the Internet and whatnot? Well, obviously, as you mentioned, it's been getting mass ratings and getting attention. So this week's ratings, I think, are what's going to be really interesting because it's easy to make a splash when you're first coming out, but it's then retaining those people from week to week that's going to be the big challenge. Because I know this did better than the XFL, but I think the XFL had big ratings its first week as well back in the day. So it's holding on to them. But it sounds from everything I've I've read, and I haven't seen a game, but from what I've read, that they're not 
they're not trying to make a salacious league. They're just trying to make good football that fills the gap between the NFL starting and or the NFL ending and the, the NFL starting. So hopefully they're on the right track. But one question I have is, is this owned by the NFL? Cause I'm so no, and, that, and that's one of the great things is it's in concert. I guess you could say okay. with the NFL. it's, it's done by um, Charlie Ebersole, the son of Dick Ebersole, sure. um, who was actually one of the guys behind the original XFL and uh, behind CBS. He's a producer of CBS and all that stuff. Um, it's a single entity league. Um, it's not owned by the NFL, but they brought in Bill Polian, who has a long history as a GM and a GM. And they brought in all these coaches uh, to basically get it to the point where it's watchable football. You know, the XFL was great as far as getting eyeballs on the TV that first week. They had the it was in Las Vegas and they had that Rod Smart as he hate me and just a bunch of cool stuff that everybody remembers. And the league was just on freaking watchable. I mean, the ball was like rubber, so you couldn't catch it. Um, the players were terrible. The injuries were frequent. It was just unwatchable. And this looks like college teams it looks like really really good college players like the, like the best college players um in the first week the offensive line play was really bad it was just not enough time when you have just a month with guys to gel and so defenses were just lighting people up uh this week has been sort of a resurgence the offensive line play was a lot better and so the offense has produced a lot more and it's been uh this second week was was a far better than the first and and you kind of what's nice about this league is there's only eight teams there's only four games and they're all staggered so you can literally watch you know i don't have the nfl network i do have cb cbs sports though so i watch the cbs sports game and then the nfl network one is actually live on their website and so you can just watch from behind the play throughout the whole game you don't get the announcers or anything but what i'm trying to say is you get to watch the entire league and so i feel like i know these eight teams better than the nfl teams because that you can only watch you know a handful of games and it's always changing you know like i know my packers because i watch the packers every week but here, I feel like I know the whole league. So, uh, Luke, this is the part of the show. You know it wouldn't be a kid Seriously show without a Maya Madrid's ranking, right? So each week, we're going to go through and we're going to rank the teams from crap burgers to the very best of the league. Are you ready to go? Do it. All right, look, when I first wrote this, number eight was going to be one team, but then it switched because I have to. Um, these two teams at the bottom here are both train wrecks. And uh, we're going to go number eight is going to be Atlanta. And Atlanta is a team that I like. Now, my team is the Iron just because they have the Swedish jerseys. And when you're a northerner in a league that's pretty much made up of southern teams, like I think the farthest north team is is uh, Salt Lake City. So when you're a northerner, it's kind of seems, you know what I mean? But um, or, the Iron have awesome uniforms, but I really kind of wish they could pick over because Atlanta, it was actually named, it's the name of the Legends, and they have uh, crowns on their helmet, and it's actually for Martin Luther King and Hank Aaron. So um, they are they, – they hold a soft spot in my heart. They're probably my second favorite team, when, which is only eight teams in the league. Um, but they are the worst. Uh, a month before the season, Chile, your guy, uh, was supposed to be the head coach of this team and backed out. And then like four days before the season started, Michael Vick was like, you know what, I'm too busy. I can't be the offensive coordinator of this team. And so they just like – it's just been a dumpster fire. I think they have more talent than the team that beat them tonight but Atlanta legends are the worst team in the league right now. Let's look at team number seven. <laughs> One of the worst teams in the league is San Diego, uh, quote unquote, led by Mike Martz. They benched their quarterback already. Like within the first game, there was like audio, you know, cause there's a lot more audio in this league. And they're like, we got to get rid of the quarterback. Like it was like in the third quarter against San Antonio. Um, and so their offensive line has been awful, and there's really not a lot of cause for optimism so far. They're a one on one, but they beat Atlanta, and they struggled to do so. So I, I question that. So uh, we'll move now to number six, and this is another 0 2 team. It's the Memphis Express. They're named the Express because that's where FedEx is from, and they didn't want to do music or food because they, they figured that would be kind of cheesy. So um, speaking of cheesy, their head coach is Mike Singletary, and I just have never really bought what he's selling since he played. I mean, I, I thought he was an awesome player, but I never really liked him when he was a 49er, and I haven't seen much. They got off to a, a, a good start 
uh, this week against the Apollos, but uh, Steve Spurrier kind of wiped the floor with them in the second half. So they try to run the ball, but other teams do it better. They try to play defense, but other teams do it better. They're just kind of like a, a weak facsimile of what the rest of the league is doing. So that's your number six. Number five, another 0-2 team. This is actually an 0-2 team that I like. Uh, not, not that I like. I don't like them because I don't like the city. But it's a team that I think could be pretty good and could be a playoff team. It's the Salt Lake City Stallions. Haven't been impressed by their creativity on offense, but that's not really surprising. Their head coach is Dennis Erickson. He was the head coach back when uh, the, the University of Miami. And so he was awesome. One of the great coaches in college, so long as he had the most talent. And after that, when he went to Seattle with the Seahawks and when he went to Oregon State and Arizona State and all that, I mean, he sucked because he never had the talent. So no surprise there. Good news for them is they have the best defensive guy in the league that I've seen. Carter Schultz has been just a beast, just a terror, uh, lighting people up. And I look for them to rebound once they get a better schedule because they played the Hot Shots in the first week, and the Hot Shots are a great team. And then they played – uh, the iron this week and lost the lead. So they're 0 2, but it's a good 0 2. And I look for them to be that, that's, uh, have a chance at that second Western playoff spot. Number four, you're looking at the San Antonio Commanders. We're getting to rarefied air here. Uh, we have the best teams in the league. The Commanders could be, they're, they're weird. They could be one of the best teams in the league. They may not make the playoffs. It's, they're really kind of the X factor this year. They got it. Two quarterbacks who, who have both moved the ball. Logan Woodside uh, is a Toledo player. And then they have a former Packer practice squad guy, Marquise Williams, uh, from North Carolina. And he is just electric with the ball. Like, not really throwing, but when he runs, like, great things happen for them. So they're kind of like playing both of these guys, especially in the game today. Um, they look great against Atlanta, but then they got wrecked against the Apollos. And I don't mean, like, wrecked and just their defense like the apollos played really poor for like three quarters and then just decided to turn it on and scored like 37 points and um so they're really kind of hit or miss i don't know what to think about this team are they the team that kicked the crap out of the fleet well i don't really respect the fleet right now so um are they the team that that you know that the apollos came back twice from 10 points down. I don't really know, but I, th I think they're pretty good, and we'll, we'll see. So number three team, it's Maya's Birmingham Iron. The team plays great defense, has been the beneficiary of turnovers so far this season, which is kind of a dangerous spot to be in. Like, turnovers are, are very sort of random. But we'll really need to see where they go because while their defense has been great, their offense has been real hit or miss. One of the best quarterbacks in the league, this guy named Luis Perez, he was the equivalent of the Division II Heisman Award winner. And they also have Trent Richardson, who you mentioned earlier. You saw a, a gif of him. And he uh, is, is he looks – when you look at him, he looks like one of the most talented people in the league. Unfortunately, like his offensive line is so bad that he can't get anything done. He rushed for 46 – 41 of those yards were after first contact, which means he's getting hit in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage and just – like falling forward or driving forward. So that's a bit of a mess. Uh, you know, Perez, who I talked about earlier, he reminds me of Manning. And when I say that, I mean Archie Manning because he's like a really, really good quarterback who's just getting the crap kicked out of him all the time. So um, we'll really have to see with the iron. Their defense is awesome. They're super gritty. Like they were down nine and got a special, special teams touchdown, and they're just like all like fight. Um, I don't think that they're that top echelon, though. The top echelon is these top two teams. Number two, if we recorded last week, the number one team would be the Arizona Hot Shots, but they're number two this week. Their offense was on fire, no pun intended. And I think they, they have this wide receiver named Rashad Ross, um, who might be the best receiver in the league. He didn't have the most receiving yards, but when he catches the ball, he is so fast. He turns it on. He's a little bit older of a player. He's 29. So I don't think he's going to be the guy that makes it the jump into the league. Maybe as one of, you know, as injuries mount, we think of like the New Orleans Saints who had a ton of injuries this year at the wide receiver position. Maybe that's a situation where he can make it back into the league. But it doesn't matter. This dude's just fun as hell to watch. Uh, John Walford, like I mentioned, he is the former quarterback from Wake Forest. Been really, really good this far. But their defense is real hit or miss. I don't think anyone's going to beat them in the West, but they're going to have to be more consistent. And I wonder, they played against Memphis this week in the cold, and I think that might have hurt them a little bit, hurt their offense. But number one, uh, it's not close right now. It's the Orlando Apollos. They played pretty well their first game and 
blew out Atlanta, who I think is the worst team in the league. Uh, but this week they looked great again. Steve Spurrier's first play in that first week was something called a Mills concept, which was what he did at Florida, like all the time, first play of the game, first play of the year, just chucked it deep. And he's just been chucking it deep over and over again. He's got the best quarterback in the league, and he's got two wide receivers who are probably the two best wide receivers in the league. One is named Charles Johnson, he's a former Viking player, um, who I didn't really know much about, but you might remember. And then uh, the other guy is, I've got here, is Marshall, Jalen Marshall. And if the, uh, if those two guys keep playing like this, they're going to be just absolutely phenomenal. And in the fourth quarter today, they didn't really have much of a running game, but in the fourth quarter, they gave the ball to, to Ernest Johnson, and he just totally was like running for, I think it was 7.1 yards of carry in the fourth quarter. Um, they just kind of have like a running back by committee sort of thing going on. And the Apollos look great. I think if I had to bet on it, I think Spurrier is going to walk away with the championship. But, you know, we're only 20% done with this season, so we'll kind of see where it goes. So, Luke, there we go. Those are my rankings. What questions do you have, man? Do they still call it the fun and gun? Uh, they should because it's a lot of fun, and he is mowing down people left and right. There is probably 100 bad jokes I could make, but we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, Spurrier is the same old swagger, punch you in the mouth, just keep going deep, keep going deep, keep going. Like, he does not give a crap, and that's always been his thing, and that's who he is in this league, and it's so much fun to watch. All right, everybody, those are my AAF rankings, my AAF news. Please uh, reach out to me at Maya Madrid on Twitter. Tell me what you think. Tell me how great I am. Tell me how I suck. But either way, I'll be back with the news for next week.